ladies and gentlemen, I give you Femi Adeben. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Banks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, right, how are you guys doing? You well? No, you guys can help a brother out, man. It's, it's cold out here, man. Hi, right, guys. You guys are great. You good? Yeah. Great. My name is Femi Adebanji. Thanks for that introduction. I actually blush when I hear that. It's like a three-page CV. Uh, he doesn't have my banking details, so you don't have to... Uh, I don't have his banking details, I mean. Don't have to worry. Um, I'm based in Johannesburg. I'm a customer service and organizational ex excellence speaker. Um, I'm originally from Nigeria. Um, your cell phones are safe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your laptops are safe. I don't perform miracles. I'm not a pharmacist. And I don't, I don't do financial engineering. So let, let's get it out there. I've got 10 minutes. OK. Here's the thing. We live in a world of challenge, world of change, world of competition. You all agree. We live in a world where what worked yesterday might not work today. It might be completely irrelevant tomorrow. We all agree. We live in a world where organizations and their people, us, have to ask themselves some very key questions, which are what must we do to ensure that in this dynamic and brave new world, we survive and thrive? And I think more importantly, who must we become to ensure that in the hearts and minds of our customers and our clients, we are distinct so that we don't become extinct? Here's the truth. See, the days when we can rely on the uniqueness of our products and, 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 and the competitiveness of our pricing, those days are gone. It's never to return. The only real advantage any business on this planet has left is the ability to give its customers an exceptional and distinct customer service experience again and again and again. So here's the truth. Our survival in this dynamic world is driven by a number of factors, driven by the extent to which we give excellence in every single thing that we do. Firstly, it's driven by the willingness to adapt and be flexible and be resilient in the changing world. And I think thirdly, most importantly, the ability to be distinct in our customers' mind and be distinct and separate from our competitors in the marketplace. Are we all still on the same page? Okay, let me share a story with you that illustrates this. I'm a speaker and I'm on the road a lot. And last year I was in Cape, let me put this here, otherwise if it goes missing, or oh, the Nigerian guy took it. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> where, where Mark can see it. So I was in Cape Town, giving a talk for AXA. I give my talk and uh, I'll go back to the conference, to the hotel room. While I'm in the hotel room, my cell phone rings, okay? Bring, bring, I answer the phone. Same as that, how's it, man, how's it, boot? And I'm like, hey, how's it, brother? And I'm thinking, hey, I, don't, I don't know who this guy is. You know that kind of phone call where the guy is so, like, passionate and friendly? And I'm trying to be polite. I don't know who the guy is. He says, oh, my name is Mohammed. I, 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 I'm your shuttle for tomorrow. I know you're leaving at 10 o'clock. What time shall I pick you up? So I'm impressed. I said, well, Mohammed, you know, actually, you're right. My flight is at 10 o'clock. Can you pick me up around 8 o'clock? I have an hour or so to kill. Does that work for you? We both agree. Done. The next morning, 8 o'clock sharp, Mohammed was at the hotel. I go downstairs, he helps me with my luggage, puts my stuff in the boot of his car. He goes to the front. I go to the back to get in, passenger door at the back. As I opened the door at the back, my entire world began to unravel. That's hard for a West African to be surprised. <laughs> I see things I've never seen in the shuttle service before. I see two bottles of water still in sparkling. I see a hand lotion. I see the Cape Times newspaper. I see a very expensive looking pen. Mont Blanc-ish, not Mont Blanc. Let's get it straight. <laughs> the Mont Blanc-ish looking kind of pen at the back. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a second. Well, you know, so, you know, naturally you feel guilty. You know, I don't know why, I just feel guilty. So he goes to the front, I go to the back and I squeeze myself here. And the stuff was all this way, you know? He goes to the front, about to give him, about to leave, and I, he sits down, and I'm sitting this way, and he looks at me. And I think he saw the apprehensive look on my face, you know, from the rearview mirror. He says, Mr. Adibanji, by the way, relax. The mints are yours, the paper's yours, the hand lotion's yours, you know, the Cape Time newspaper's yours. He didn't mention the pen, so I took a hint, you know. <laughs> no, take it easy, enjoy. But I still wasn't convinced, because it, it just doesn't happen often, you know. It's like going to a taxi, and the taxi driver says, hey, boss, take free water. You're not going to drink it? You're like, really? You got another thing. So he turns around and says, Mr. Banji, relax. Because I was waiting for that four-letter magic word. So Mr. Banji, no, no, take it easy. It's free. I go, yes. <laughs> well, see, I didn't go yes like that. Otherwise, he'll throw me out. I go yes in my own head. So we're about to leave. Now, what would have been a mundane trip to the airport was becoming increasingly spectacular. What would have been a, an ordinary trip to the airport was becoming increasingly extraordinary. But well, here's the thing, it gets better. Just before we drive off, he turns around and looks at me. He says, Mr. Banji, by the way, would you like the radio on or off? Or is there a specific kind of music that you like? Now, rightfully, I'm upset. Because nobody is that good, right? 
So I'm thinking maybe I'm on Africa's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> you know why I want to stand up back, there's a camera in there, and you're thinking, and they're laughing at you in the line and standing back, you don't even know. So I thought, wait a second, and you guys laugh. That's a very traumatic thing for me. I said, you know, I'm going to try this guy out. I said, I said Mohammed, you know, I'm, I'm glad you asked. You know, I actually like lounge music, specifically Buddha Bar 4. I was very specific. <laughs> Mohammed turns around, takes his iPod, very calmly. He begins to scroll. After about 20 seconds, he looks at me very calmly. He says, Mr. Adibanji, I haven't got Buddha Bar 4 on the lounge. I'm really sorry. I apologize. So I'm thinking, yes, you see, I, but I have Café Del Mar on the lounge. How will that suit you? My jaw dropped. I said, Mohammed, you know what? Right now, if you play me marimba music, I couldn't care less. Because what you've done is taking something ordinary and made it extraordinary. What you've done is taking something mundane and made it spectacular. What are we doing to make the ordinary extraordinary for our customers and our clients? What are we doing to make the mundane spectacular for our clients? You see, the days where we can rely on our unique products and our, our competitive pricing, those days are gone. The only real advantage we have left is the ability to give our customers an exceptional customer service experience again and again and again. Now, I know the guys here looking at me and thinking, Femi, that's a fantastic story. That's a really good story. We don't quite believe you, though. But you see here, bam! After 11 years of marriage, I've come to appreciate the power of photographic evidence. <laughs> you see, it's such a, if, you don't, if you don't have the picture to back it up, it just look, it's a, you know what I'm saying? That's the water. That's the Cape Town. That's the pen I'm talking about. Right, there you go. That's the mints. But here's the important thing also. I, I gave him a big tip when we arrived at the airport. And I, and I asked him, I said, Mohammed, why have you gone through all this trouble? I'm, I'm not complaining. Don't lower the standards next time I'm in Cape Town. Like, don't give me the mints or something. But why have you done all this stuff? He looked me dead in the eye. He said, Sadi Banji, the industry in Cape Town has become competitive and challenging. Unless I adapt to those changes, I will be without a job unless I get, make myself distinct in my customers' minds, I mean, distinct as a brand from my competitors in the marketplace, I'll be out on the street. So what am I saying? Every time our customers engage with us, they're asking themselves a few key questions. It's very simple. Engage with you, your people, your brand before a sale, during a sale, after a sale. Doesn't matter how brief the encounter is. They're asking themselves a few key questions. Those questions are, do you make my life easier or better? And we're all the face of the brand, all of us, every single one of us. Do you make my life easier or better? That's the first thing. Second thing they ask themselves is, do you meet or exceed my expectations? And thirdly, they ask themselves, do you give me a reason to come back? That's what they're asking themselves. And at that point, our engagement with them, our interaction with them is influencing the perception of our brand. And they're deciding there and then if we're a brand of distinction or not. That's how simple it is. Consumers have choice now. For every product or service out there, there's tens, hundreds, and thousands of options to choose from. So it's not about our products anymore. It's how we make them feel. It's a world of challenge and change and competition. What worked yesterday might not work today, might be completely irrelevant tomorrow. It's three things. To give excellence in all that we do, we adapt and innovate we remain resilient in a changing world, and we hold ourselves accountable for our own success. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Femi Adebanji.